Hello YouTube friends! My name is Constance and this is Cruelty Free Musings. Welcome back to my channel. I have bat wings, bat wing sleeves, very exciting extra drama. Everyone who knows me knows that I need my clothing to express more drama. So here we are, sweater with sleeves. Anyway, why are we here? We are here for a project pan update. This is a year long not rolling project pan called the new decade project pan. It was started by Rebecca Panning and Stuff, and it came to my attention through uh, Rachel Stephanie doing her own introduction of her participation and encouraging people to get involved. It is a collaborative project pan, which means if you feel like it, you can just start posting pictures and join in whenever you want, and also you can search for the keyword New Decade Project Pan and watch more videos. Because we all need more panning videos, right? To watch, that's, yeah, yes, agreed. So, uh, the premise of this Project Pan is that you take 10 items in your collection that are new and you work on them for an entire year and you see how much you can use up, whether you can hit pan, generally how used you can get your things looking over the course of the year. I did not introduce 100% new things, but they were all nearly new, used a couple of times. And with all of that background out of the way, let us get into the updates. Yay! So here we are. Update. Update number one. I'm going to go off of this list, which looks like a blank sheet of paper to you because I'm it's written on in pencil. But anyway, this is my notebook that I'm going off of for this project pan. Uh, because I started a spread in my bullet journal to uh, keep track of how many times I use things and then immediately went off the rails. There are things in this project that I have used a lot. Okay, I'm now better centered. Alright, there are things in this project that I have used a lot that have no progress marks in my bullet journal at all. So we're just going off of this list and whatever things I have written down. And we're going in the order that I have them written on in this sheet. So we are starting with this blush. It is uh, Becca Mineral, it is just called the Mineral Blush, the color is Wild Honey, it's brown, I'm wearing it today. Does it look soft and neutral? Good, it's meant to. If I over apply, it looks very orange very quickly. So, um, you can see probably you can probably see a little bit that I have used it. I have roughed up the surface a little bit. Have I made progress? Yeah. Can you tell? No, because it's blush. The hope is to hit pen by the end of this year. Will I? Who knows? because I didn't last year on last year's blush that was also basically new when I started but slightly more used than that one which I had used zero times. 
as is the point of everything in this project panel. All right, item number two, which is on my list. This is the Jovia's Place Nubian 2 eyeshadow palette. This was the first thing that I thought of when I saw Rachel Stephanie's video. I was like, oh yeah, I bought that eyeshadow palette and I took it out of the box and haven't used it. All right, so let's get a nice close-up shot look. I've used it some. You can see there's some marks on this taupe, which is a Sheba. I have only swatched Cleopatra because I don't wear blue eyeshadow because dark circles and blue eyeshadow don't get along super well. In case you were wondering, not a good, not a great combination. Um, I don't remember if I've used this matte purple at all. Um, this matte brown is actually fairly neutral. Um, and it has been a workhorse, cliched, basic color. It pairs really nicely with a super shock shadow that I have in my other project. Um, so I've worn it that way. Um, I've gotten some use out of Egypt here, um, which is actually very dark. That's the main reason that I haven't gotten more use out of it, because it is so dark. Uh, this is the main, is this? This is 100% what I have on my eyes today. I have Sheba and Zori, uh, which Zori is my um, probably most used shade with Madagascar. I have Madagascar on to blend out the edges. And I have Layla, which is this dark, neutral, shimmery purple to deepen the outer edge. This in the inner corner, this to add a little bit this uh, Shiba to add a little bit of shine in the center of the lid. So it's basically a shimmer look. Um, yeah, I have, I have definitely already gotten tired of this palette, but it's so solid and work a day that it's easy to go back to still. Like I just throw this on and this, or this on and and this and then I'm like okay yeah I mean like it's a very warm palette it may not look that warm because of the pink background but it does end up looking quite warm especially if I lean on you know these colors or um, this color this bright gold um, or this taupe is actually surprisingly warm. Um, so it's, it's quite a warm palette, um, but I have, uh, been pretty successful in making good use out of that palette and, um, because bad project pen or no cookie, um, I do not have a number of times that I have used uh, the palette at all in any way. Moving on. The next thing on my list was something that was guaranteed, that I was guaranteed to have at least one unopened, um, not this specifically, but this category of thing that is mascara. This is the IT Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. I have discovered in wearing this this month that I have to set my concealer pretty much. Like all of my concealers, it, it smudges onto if I don't set it with a little bit of powder. So I'll have this black shadow right underneath the crease of my eyes if I don't put a little bit of powder there, which is pretty normal. 
But um, yeah, most of my concealers this transfers onto. But if I set my concealer, it's a great mascara. It looks nice. It's a mascara that will last, like the tube will, will last until it starts flaking. But I do like that mascara and when I've had a full size tube of it in the past, it has lasted for more than three months, which is amazing for me with a mascara. So I haven't been using it for that long. It has been open for about a month, but so far I still like it. Again, unusual for a mascara. Difficult eyelashes, long, curly, not something that most people think of when they think difficult. But you know, that's, that's how it is. Everything is difficult in its own way. Even if your lashes look nice naturally, you, they still, they still have their issues. Okay, next stop. The Urban Decay 24-7 Eyeliner in the color Loaded. It is a dark green. And I have used it some amount. So let's see that. Block out my face. Okay. So that is the amount that I have used. I have used up not quite one square of graph paper worth of eye pencil but I mean when you look at how long it is it's like it like starts out as half the sheet of paper maybe a third so having used not quite um not quite one square probably ends up being about one sixteenth of a pencil or something. So we'll see um, how used and abused I can get this looking at the end of the year. Progress so far, not very exciting. I do like tight lining with it. It just means that I don't have to work as hard with my mascara. And if I want a little bit of a color statement, I can put it in my waterline and be like, hey, I have blue eyes now because I put green pencil right next to them. My eyes change color, sort of, to the extent that eyes can change color. Um, next up, we have the ColourPop Glitterly Obsessed. I don't think that I said the name of this in the introduction, but the name is Wish Me Luck. I mentioned um, that it is, that it was a freebie. Um, they shipped out my order and they were late. So they were like, we're sorry, here's a glitter. Um, and I like it. I've used it a little bit. I bet you can't tell. Um, This I've probably only used about four times. Um, I do like it. I think that the glitters actually, I think that the glitters in this are less annoying and difficult to get off of your eyes than the pressed glitters. So um, I would say that these probably are more user friendly than the um, than the pressed glitters that are in all of the new release eyeshadow palettes now. Which I have a couple of them because I bought them in single shadow palettes. Um, and uh, so far I haven't worn a pressed glitter from Colourpop without having to take tape to my face multiple days after wearing the glitter and be like, okay, speck of glitter randomly in the middle of my cheek from three days ago. It's time for you to leave. Or just stay there because I can't get you off even with tape. Fine. Whatever. 
not bad. But moving on. Uh, this is more user friendly than that. But probably a little bit more, a uh, probably a little bit more glitter fallout because the um, bits of glitter are not as tenacious, but also less tenacious. Maybe not a bad thing. Moving on, we have Anastasia Beverly Hills little mini in little mini matte lipstick in coconut. Um, which had possibly been swatched when I introduced it. And now you can probably tell that the tip is a little bit blunted. Um, I'll just go ahead and show you both of these at once because they are marked pretty close together. I would say that I've probably used coconut a little bit more than I've used orange blossom. So coconut is dark, is like a, a dark, cool tone nude, or like a like a my lip tone nude, um, but which is cool tone. And then this is a lighter, very warm nude. I have to pair um, this one, um, orange blossom. I have to pair with a lip gloss or with a lip liner just to soften the edges a little bit and make it not look like I just put concealer on my lips. Um, and I have also found that the um, the formula for those lipsticks can be a little bit drying on reapplication, so they're better with lip gloss anyway, or applying them over lip balm. So, um, here we have, let me see if I can see it, but also not be in frame. No. I may need to take a still of this and edit it in. Um, I have used up very similar amounts of both of these a little bit more of coconut than of orange blossom, but very similar amounts. They just live on my desk at work. And if I'm feeling like I just need to throw on a lip color and I don't mind my lips being a little bit dry, this is what I do. All right, next up, for those moments when I don't want my lips to be a little bit dry, this is the Persona Lip Gloss in the shade Pink Gloss. It may just be the shade Pink and Gloss be the name of the thing. But anyway, this is the lip gloss. I had possibly worn it once when I introduced it for a partial day. And I have been, I would say, using it a lot the last, I would say I've been using it a lot the last week or so. Um, there is a little bit of a hole, a little bit of a window developing there, if you can see it. Um, obviously, there's still a lot of lip gloss in here because, you know, I've been using it mostly for a week. But if I am, you know, if I maybe walked out of the house with just my sunscreen on, this is a great thing to just throw on, be a little bit of moisture on my lips, not be any kind of nonsense it's just like a little bit of shine gloss a little bit of color but it's not that different to my natural lip color so it doesn't look super out of place when i'm not even wearing mascara much less concealer and blush 
Speaking of concealer, next up, we have the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. And this, since it uh, stands up, it is stored standing up, so you can actually see that um, I have been using it. Is it super de duper used? No. But um, I am making decent progress on it for something that I don't wear every day. Daily basis, um, like wearing a concealer on a daily basis consistently, it takes me about mm, three or four months to go through a concealer. I have been, well, first of all, I switched my work schedule so that I was getting there earlier and getting home earlier, which I love getting home earlier. Uh, getting out the door earlier means that I don't wear makeup as much. Uh, about half of the days, I would say, I go to work without any makeup on, which I'm fun with. I, it doesn't bother me not wearing makeup. I actually think that sunscreen just by itself um, has a nice blurring and smoothing effect on the skin, especially since I wear mineral sunscreen and I am basically the color of a white cast anyway. You think I'm joking? Um, <clears throat> so getting up early, getting out the door earlier, but not getting up earlier, uh, means I'm not wearing makeup as much. I'm really happy to be going through my concealer at the rate that I'm going through it, which is a little bit slower. It's fine. My camera stopped recording, which was very rude. Yeah, it wasn't that important. On to the last update thing. This is my Kenra Platinum Boosting Spray Foam. This is number 17. Uh, when I introduced this, this was 285 grams. That was the starting weight. Now it is 267 grams. You want to know how many times I have heat styled my hair? Maybe four. Probably three of those were from wet hair. Most of the time, I wash my hair. I shower in the evening. I wash my hair before I go to bed, which means I put um, a, a mousse in it, a foam, and then I sleep on wet hair and my hair looks like a, a rat's nest when I wake up and I just tease the back of my hair and I'm like, okay, cool, we did it. I do like the way that my hair looks when I blow dry with this, but I mentioned that I'm getting up earlier. Right? Yes. Not that I'm getting up earlier, that I'm going to work earlier. So when I have moved up the time that I leave by a full 40 to 50 minutes, um, the chances that I am blow drying my hair are non-existent. Just, let's just say it, non-existent before I go to work. So if I shower in the mornings and wash my hair, yes, I will put this in my hair and blow dry it and it looks fantastic. And I don't typically shower in the morning, so it's amazing that I am going through this as fast as I am, which is in one month I've used up 18 grams. 18 grams. Um, 
for the for the record, the net weight on this is 227 grams. So the chances that I will use this up this year at this rate are non-existent. I may start blow drying my hair before I go to bed. Just so that I can use this up faster. Because like I do, I do like how it looks. The thing is, I don't know if it would stay in a way that I would like how it looks after I've slept on it. It's worth at least doing once, just to see if it's worth the effort. Because, I mean, I own this. And what's the point of owning something that you don't use? I use it. But not that often. I use this when I have washed my hair and I have time to blow dry it. So if I am going to bed after I have bathed, then typically I'm not blow drying it. I am putting mousse in it and letting it air dry. If I have woken up and my hair is dry, but I want to curl it, I use this, which is a thermal styling spray, heat protectant and hairspray in one. So if I use this and blow dry my hair, I also use that afterward to um, hold what I've done in place. Probably not if I am, uh, probably would not need to hold it in place if I was going to bed. But like, if I'm teasing my hair in the morning to give it a little bit more lift in the back, then I use the thermal styling spray over the boosting spray foam because the boosting spray foam is supposed to be used in damp hair. So, We will see how I go with that if I decide to use, you know, if I decide to blow dry my hair in the evenings, we shall see. Um, but that, those are all 10 items. I hope you enjoyed or learned something or both. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Do whatever you feel like. And goodbye for now. Really? My camera stopped recording, which was very rude.